Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Will Patterson, and welcome back to a new video. If you can't tell, I'm full of cold, and apologies for the lack of content that's been coming out recently. Things have been going on, but everything should be all up to speed now. I feel like I'm saying that in a lot of videos, but trust me, we've got things coming at you. It's gonna be great. Today, we're gonna to be doing something that I think a lot of you guys have been after on this channel, and that I've been too scared to do as of till now. And that is to basically create logo designs for fictitious companies in different sectors of different industries. The hope behind this is that you could take some of the knowledge that I'm imparting or hopefully going to impart into you, take some of the challenges and feel as if you can do it yourself. Now today I'm gonna to be working on a logo for a tech company that creates apps for the Google Play Store and the App Store on the iPhone and also a web app. Obviously this is not a real company, so I've come up with a brief by myself, but I'm gonna take you through the whole process from the setting up to the move on, to the drawing, to the idea and the concepts, to finishing and basically presenting it. But before we get into this, if you could drop a like, make sure you press that red subscribe button with the notification bell as well to never miss out on a video like this. That would have helped me so much. And also if you enjoyed the video, please share it with your friends or your college or wherever you're at. I think we're on to a good series here. Let me know if you like it down below. So the first thing that I do, and I think everyone does in the design industry when they're given a brief, is that they think about it. And the way that I think about this brief is thoughtfully through visual writing. And by that, I mean, I use an app called Milanote. Now Milanote is an app that I've used for about a year now of just probably nearly a year, where I go ahead and I visually plan my thoughts and everything I do on there. I do mood boarding and everything else. As you can see in Milanote, I come up with a creative brief and I write it myself, even though the company has probably already given me a substantial one, I like to rewrite it to make sure I got everything correct and to also concise it. So I write down the goals of the company, the background of the company, everything to do there, because I need to remember this during the process. Now, the great thing about doing this sort of creative brief exercise is that you're asking yourselves questions. Now, these questions can prove to be really useful and helpful when it comes to creating the logo and coming up with concepts. The goal of designing a logo is to not have loads of ideas in your head, but it's to have loads of ideas on paper and to methodically and educationally choose the best idea, the one that works the best for the company, not just one that is visually aesthetically pleasing. So I start writing down the goals of the project, like what are the problems that need to be solved? And for this project, it was kind of like, there's gonna be a few other apps like this. Now the idea of this app that we're creating, it's called Question Me, and it's all about asking questions. It's about people who want thought provoking questions answered by other people, whether they're professional thought provocateurs or people who are uh, philosophical people or people who just have random questions. Now, a lot of places on the line have this sort of question app, such as Reddit. You can ask questions on there and people will answer them. But this one's to niche down on people who are just very thought provoking. And it's gonna be an iPhone app, a Google Play app, and also a web app. So instantly I know that the brand and the logo has to have a instantaneous feel, whether it's on a phone, uh, on the app store, on the website, on their branding, on the email headers and everything else. So I go ahead and move on to the mood board once I've done this creative brief. And if you don't know what a mood board is, click the video before this, go onto my channel and click it. It should be somewhere. I might link it down below. And that'll take you through the whole process of me creating a mood board for a logo design uh, and how you can do that within the same app, which is free. So as you can see, I'm using keywords in the actual Milanote image finder. I type in app icons and I get images from Unsplash. I go to Behance. I'm looking for very geometric designs that could inspire me or give off a certain mood. I'm also looking for question marks that you can't see on here, but I'm actually drawing them out on my iPad as we speak. So you can see the first correlation that we have with this is that there is a lot of bright colors. And I talk about this or I annotate this during the process of me doing a mood board. The annotation process of a mood board is super important. It's what helps you correlate the good moods between the bad moods. It's what helps you piece together what the visuals of the company are trying to take. And we come up with the visuals or objective understanding of the mood board through the annotations and basically just 
saying what you see and the reasons why you put it in there and how it's going to further the company. Now, during the mood warnings phase, I'm also looking at the brief stage of when I did my creative brief because I'm trying to work out whether it solves the problem because logo design is all about solving a problem. We're all problem solvers and it's a challenge. So we're trying to basically complete all the tasks and to solve all the problems and achieve the goals of the company whilst creating something nice. I also look at the color palettes as well. The color palettes are a huge thing. I like to work out what the best colors would be. So I go to this website called Cooler and inside of Milano, you can just put the hex code in and you can generate cool color patterns just as ideas. The ones that I chose are very bright and colorful because I understand that on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store as well, that there's gonna be a lot of competition and I wanted to make sure that the color of the app stood out just as much as the logo inside of the app. I get all of my images for the mood board inside of Behance, Google, Unsplash, and everything else. It's super easy. Look at my last video if you wanna learn how to mood board properly. Now we're on to me drawing on the iPad. Now this part of the process is probably the hardest, but yet the most fun part of it because we're coming up with ideas. So now we've got the creative brief and we've done the mood board, we need to draw out some concepts. If you've ever heard me before talk about how you come up with logo design ideas, or if you've been to my workshops or been on a live stream, you know that I'm a big fan of basically giving yourself a 10 minute time limit and coming up with as many ideas as possible. And the basis of that is don't be afraid to come up with bad ideas. Most of your ideas are going to be bad until you get one or two good ones. As you can see here, I'm on my iPad. I do a lot of my sketching on the iPad to make it easier for me to upload it to my computer into Illustrator and basically have it already digitized. I'm using Procreate in here with the new iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil, which is an app that I use all the time. What I know that I want from the mood board itself is I wanted something that was circular, so a geometric circle and try and come up with a letter Q. But then I realized that also the question mark, the actual ligature of a question mark is a circle as well, basically with a dot in it. So I come up with a weird way of coming up with a question or a Q as a question mark. I'm trying to get this idea across. Now the problem is uh, for videos this long as I don't know how they perform, uh, I didn't spend too long on the idea creation. So I, I ran with basically just one of the ideas that I had in my brain. So I drew it out badly. I drew out different concepts. I took as much away as I could and added bits that I didn't need to add to show you what I needed to take away. But the idea of this process is to come up with bad ideas just to see if it works. Now a rule of thumb that I like to use when I'm drawing or coming up with ideas on paper is that if it works when it's roughly drawn, such as the night logo, if you could draw it and really roughly and people will get it, then it normally works when it's fully fledged and finished as a finished logo design in Illustrator. The idea of the logo was that it had to be really memorable and bright and people could be able to draw it easily. And this is a good way of working out whether your logo is as usable as you think. So I come up with this Q design um, with the sort of like a little flicky bit for the pout of it, if that makes sense. So what I do next is I use Procreate circle and shape feature or the quick shape feature to create a cube very quickly in a clean format. Something that I thought would work really well is using sort of like a gradient or a shadow technique inside of the letter Q to make it look 3D, to make it pop out. And I know you guys hate that word, but pop out. And you can see I've got a little circle down there as well. That little circle was an idea for me to have a question mark in there somewhere. And if I spent more time in this, I probably could have worked out a better idea. Um, but next time I'll make sure to spend a bit more time on it. And I also try and create a, a letter Q out of a question mark as well, as you can see. But I end up just drawing a normal question mark, which obviously you can't really use unless it's like, you know, okay with the client. Once you've drawn all the ideas, and in my case, the idea that I wanted to use for this video, I bring it into Illustrator and I play around with it. Now, normally what you do is you choose a couple of different ideas on an educated guess on which one would be best according to the mood board and according to the creative brief through the goals. So you would choose the one or two or three ideas that meet the goal correctly. I go ahead and I choose the queue and I put it into Illustrator and I image trace it and then I also create a letter Q using the golden ratio or the Fibonacci effect. I take two ellipses and I copy it and I paste it and then I on the top right hand corner of the screen you might not be able to see it but I divide one of the 
um, sizes of the circle by 1.618 and that will give me a really good proportion or a perfect proportion for the O, which is what Target used in their logo and it's what I use in most of mine, the golden ratio. I then come up and try and create, you know, a golden ratio version of the little flicky thing, but I decided that's gonna take a bit of time. So I'm just gonna draw it out and see what happens with it. So at this point, I've got like two variations of the same idea. One is actually cut out and I was gonna use this one as the black and white version. So as to create a contrast with the Q and the stroke around it or the O and the stroke, I deleted the side parts of it and I rounded them off uh, for the black and whites. Cause obviously you can't see the gradients when it's all together. So to add a bit of something to it, I wanted to keep that little squiggly shape standing alone in the queue. Now for the fully colored version, the one that will be on the app or one that will be on the website or whatever we use, or it could just be a white on a red background. I used the gradient that I drew in and I used that through the free gradient tool inside of Illustrator by just adding some darkness to those areas. And the biggest test of all for me was to put the actual logo or the queue inside of an app icon. Now the way that I do this is I just draw an equal square around it and I round all the corners and if it looks good and if it works well and it can be seen when it's small, then it works great. But I noticed that I couldn't do it with the colors that I wanted. So instead I chose a red square or a red app icon with the white version of the cutout queue to put on top to make it easy for anyone to see that logo. The red color isn't as great. I'm gonna, the red color isn't great, but I'm gonna add a gradient to that to finish it off because I don't like the brightness of the red. I think it's just too stand outish. And then from here, I put it in a template and I mock it up onto a phone as an app and I see how it works and I try it out and I present that to the client. So guys, that is the process of this logo. Now for the next video that I wanna do in this redesigning series or designing logo series, I want you to tell me what sector. So is it gonna be an app company? Is it gonna be a tech company? Is it gonna be like, you know, an engineering company, a law firm? Whichever one, let me know down below and thumbs up the one that you like the most. But guys, thank you so much much for watching this video I just want to give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video if you're a designer on here self-employed or someone who just needs a place to put their portfolio in a professional way then Squarespace is the site for you I've been using Squarespace for years now as my hub of my website home I sell all my iPad calligraphy brushes on there which you can check out I've got my portfolio on there clients can contact me directly from the website after seeing my portfolio and you you can learn all about me. If you guys want 10% of Squarespace to have your own little home on there and not to have the trouble of hiring a web designer, not saying you shouldn't, but if you can't afford it, Squarespace is a great alternative, then I would click that link down below so you know that you can create this website. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon. Goodbye.